Tesla's highly anticipated Q4 earnings call just happened today, January 29th, 2020. Here was a headline that I read this morning before the earnings report, and here was Tesla stock after the earnings report. Needless to say, things are going well at Tesla. Hi, my name is Dylan Hong, and today we're talking about key takeaways from Tesla's Q4 earnings call and report. To help support this channel, I've put some links to Tesla accessories in the description down below, as well as the microphone I used to record this video. Tesla delivered a record 112,095 vehicles this quarter, with a 930 million increase in cash and cash equivalents to $6.3 billion. This left them with 1 billion in free cash flow at the end of Q4. Tesla achieved profitability of $359 million in operating income at a margin of 4.9%, and $105 million in net income with a reported $386 million in non gap net income. Hopefully that's the last of me just saying numbers at you, but what this really means is that those articles you see about Tesla going bankrupt, well, they're wrong. Elon Musk noted in the call today that Teslas have generated $20 billion in revenue, and this is with $0 spent on advertising. Let that sink in. $20 billion in revenue and nothing spent on advertising. How many products on earth are so compelling that they can achieve this sort of margin? Tesla was cash flow positive while building out engineering at a rapid rate, scaling supercharging, building factories, and delivering to customers. This is impressive, and this is even more impressive when you consider how many Teslas they sell per year right now compared to how many they'll sell per year in five years. Tesla sells as many cars as they produce, spend zero on advertising, and are increasing the amount that they can produce at an alarming rate. Tesla seems to agree with this hypothesis as they believe they will be cash flow positive going forward, with only possible temporary exceptions like around the launch and ramp of a new product. To back up this claim of demand, nearly all orders in 2019 came with new buyers who did not hold reservations, and this shows that they've moved past the early adopter stage for Tesla's general consumer base. On the call, they said that higher volumes driven by Model Y and Gigafactory Shanghai continued improvements in operating leverage and further cost efficiencies that should allow Tesla to ultimately reach an industry-leading operating margin. If you doubt Elon Musk's ability to reach a new operational efficiency level, you should look into how SpaceX is doing and how they launch rockets more reliably than competitors and are also cheaper in the range of hundreds of millions of dollars per launch than their competitors. They also claim that their mobile service fleet has almost doubled in 2019 to 743 vehicles and they'll continue to open new service locations globally. This is good to hear and potentially a direct aid to Tesla's largest complaint, their customer service and repairs process. Before going into more detail about the Model Y, it's worth noting that Tesla's storage and solar growth are healthy at a record deployment of 530 megawatt hours and a 26% quarterly growth for solar. All new homes in California require solar and a worldwide desire for solar will show exponential demand and output for the solar glass roof. Elon said that he expects solar and storage to grow by at least 50% in 2020. I'm somewhat surprised by these high metrics as Elon has previously stated that Model 3 was taking all of engineering and material assets away from energy, but it looks like they are on track and will continue growing, especially with the release of Solar Glass Roof version 3. Here, it's also worth noting that Tesla has put up another 1,821 supercharging stations this year, which is 10% more than last quarter. In news about autopilot and full self-driving, 3 billion miles now have been driven using autopilot. This adds more data to the neural net, training the system to be better than it is. Software will continue to play a growing role in their business model, and this will increase Tesla's ability to increase their own margins. Elon says that full self-driving might be feature complete in a few or a couple of months. What this means is that the car will be able to go from home to work with no interventions, but it might not necessarily be able to do that well. He says that they're putting in a lot of work in the foundation of autonomy, and that they're only beginning to start taking full advantage of the full self-driving hardware. He says that improving the way the neural net is trained with a three times magnitude improvement in video training will lead to a phenomenal result and have consumers see extremely rapid acceleration and improvement in the full self-driving system. There was an awkward exchange when an investor asked on the call why Tesla doesn't acquire anybody to accelerate full self-driving. Elon's response was, okay, who should we acquire? And there was no response. This means that Tesla feels like they are leading the pack in full self-driving and are planning production and rollout with this confidence in mind. Shifting gears to Model S and X shows that there was higher demand for both compared to the last three quarters. This goes against the theory that the three might cannibalize its older siblings, and the demand of Teslas is only going up as the world transitions to electric vehicles and away from internal combustion engine vehicles. Elon hinted that they were rapidly approaching a 400 mile range on the Model S, saying, it won't be long. He also said that the Models S and X got more range than currently stated on the website, 
and he said this applies to existing cars. The 370 mile number on the website is wrong, he says. It's more like in the 380s for the Model S. In response to an investor's question about improving the drivetrain or battery, Elon Musk noted the efficiency delta between something like the Model S and the Taycan. The Model S has a 100 kilowatt hour pack and the Porsche Taycan has a 95. Model S approaches 400 miles as the Taycan goes about 200 miles. Their drivetrains are nuts and Plaid powertrain with improved dynamics and power is hoped to launch at the end of this year. This will only serve to improve Tesla's massive lead when it comes to battery or drivetrain technology for electric vehicles. Finally, we get to the Model Y. Despite claims that Model Y production wouldn't start until the end of this year, production has already begun and deliveries will begin in March of this year. This is a picture of the actual production version of the Model Y and you can find this in the documents listed below. According to the website, they've removed the non-all-wheel drive versions of this car and it'll start at $52,990 US dollars. In the report they state, due to continued engineering progress of the Model Y all-wheel drive, we have been able to increase its maximum EPA range to 315 miles, compared to our previous estimate of 280 miles. This extends Model Y's lead as the most energy efficient electric SUV in the world. And looking at this graph, it's by a significant margin. This backs up everything Elon has been saying about Tesla's attention to efficiency. Think about taking the most efficient electric car you can buy, then combine that with the best battery technology you can buy. From that, you get Tesla. They are years ahead of the competition and increasing that gap every year. They also plan on getting higher margins for the Model Y. The goal is to make the car the same cost as a 3 but sell for more. Elon says when people tear apart the Model Y, they will be impressed with what they see. Tesla only took 10 months from prototype to production start, and we were able to see Model 3 production in the Shanghai factory in less than 10 months. Tesla is growing at an unprecedented rate and is showing no signs of slowing down. In addition, customers are increasingly buying their Tesla vehicles online. Vehicle deliveries grew 50% while their retail footprint remained unchanged with a stable total count across 2019. This is operational efficiency at its finest. The ramp of the Model Y is planned to be gradual and by the end of mid-2020, combined Model 3 and Model Y capacity should reach 500,000 units per year. They also mentioned that they are still planning on producing limited volumes of the Tesla semi-truck. The goal is to make sure they ramp battery production and cost per kilowatt hour for the batteries before the ramp of the semi. Battery day will come soon after the end of this quarter around April, and about the batteries, Elon says, it blows my mind. Elon notes that if you don't improve the battery production, it doesn't matter how many different types of cars you make, you are not really increasing the amount of electric vehicles on the road. This is important to note for things like the Semi, the Roadster, and the Cybertruck, where they're holding off production until they feel battery technology is at a good enough point. In regards to the demand for the Cybertruck, Elon says he's never seen anything like it. The demand is far more than they could make in three or four years even. He says that they will sell as many as they can make for many years. This product is better than people realize, he says. They don't have enough information right now to know how awesome it really is. And this really makes me wonder what they left out of their presentation. I really agree with this comment that Elon made on the call. He said, it's harder to think of another company that has a more exciting technology and product roadmap. They made 1000 times more cars in 2020 than in 2010. Where will they be in 10 years from now? The closing notes of the call were that we should expect next quarter to seem a little difficult. There will be delays on the Model 3 because of coronavirus, and they will be ramping two major products. This will lead to increased spending, but that should not outpace the growth of revenue. As a Tesla investor, I'm extremely excited by this call. The great news across the board with increased revenue, increased production, increased deliveries, and constant improvement to efficiency reinstate the reasons that I really believe in Tesla as a company and its ability to further its mission statement of transitioning the world to a sustainable energy source. In the short term, I'm really excited to the bump in the stock price this has shown, but I'm also more excited about Autonomy Day and Battery Day and seeing the future of technology within Tesla. This has always been their strong suit and everything that we've seen today further adds to the idea that they will continue to outpace their competition. With high demand and high production for extremely well-performing products, as well as a really bright future product roadmap, I really couldn't be more excited about being a Tesla investor and just watching the company grow. If you want to listen to the call or read the report, I'm going to link everything down in the description once they're available. Did you see it? Did you have any key takeaways or was there something that you wish they would have talked about? Let me know in the comments below and we can have a discussion. For now, my name is Dylan Hong. Like and subscribe for some more videos and thanks for watching.